Oh. Hi. Sorry for jumping directly into cutting those wood pieces. But I bet you all know what I am going to do, right? In this video, let's make a casting vacuum chamber for my workshop. As you all know, a vacuum chamber is such a great equipment in many purposes. It is used in making plaster mold, silicone mold. You name it. And moreover, we use it for metal casting when there are intricate details and undercuts on the mold. Delivers highly quality both looks and measurements. With those functional requirements that I've just named, I want my vacuum chamber to have a clear side, that I can see what is going on, especially silicone when I vacuum it. And on the other hand, it can withstand the heat of the flask, when I do the metal casting. Which are around 800 degrees in Fahrenheit or 430 degrees in Celsius, and even higher. I have to admit that, I failed the first time when I tried to make this vacuum chamber. So I have to redo it all over again. But luckily, I have made it in my second attempt. The main reason is because of the lid, it has to be easily opened or closed. But also be completely air sealed at the same time. I know, this might sound simple as it should be. Anyway, this is my final look of the vacuum chamber after I modified some parts of my previous design. As you can see, I actually have two chambers here. One for normal vacuum purpose and one for the flask when I do metal casting. By the way, these are my homemade flask. Homemade high temperature gaskets and homemade rubber sprue base for wax casting. If you are interested in how I made them, please check out my other video in this channel. I know, please disregard my tongs here. I will make longer and more appropriate tongs for my flasks. But that would be my next mini project. For now, let's go back and let's make this vacuum chamber. As you may know, I bought a half an inch thick crystal clear acrylic sheet and screwed it in my first attempt vacuum chamber. But actually, what I learned is that you need at least three quarters of an inch thick acrylic, even though the half an inch feels so strong when you try to bend it by hand. However, when you try to vacuum it, it is not strong enough. So here, I am making a new sheet using epoxy resin, which I always have in my workshop because you can do so many things with it. This sheet doesn't need to be thick though as I am going to pour another layer on top of it. You will see what I mean later. To create the template, I am using two 25 inch or two millimeters model foam board, wax paper and super glue. I then smooth its edges out by the belt sander and cutting straight grooves on my prayer wood pieces that I was cutting at the beginning of this video. I will then slide the epoxy resin sheet through these grooves like you see in this video. On the top side of the box, I cut out a round hole by using my jigsaw, ready for the lid later. Retouch with my sander, the top part should now be ready. To make the lid, with some preparation, I used my trim router to cut it out from my MDF wood board, with a groove in the middle. You can definitely use the crystal clear acrylic sheet in this case. However, as you know, acrylic sheets are relatively expensive, so I use MDF wood in my case. And I will protect it with a coat of epoxy later. Before assembling the top side of the vacuum chamber, I make sure to attach the light socket at the corner of the wood piece. From now on, it will be quite difficult to reach inside the box for any modification. And that's it. My job now is to use wood screws to assemble all the wood pieces and the epoxy sheet together. Again, the band clamp is very useful in this case. To completely seal the inside of the vacuum chamber, I use black silicone sealant. But I still keep the tape on the epoxy resin sheet. Since I am going to paint it in black later. Looking good. Alright. Let's continue with our lid. I chose a round plastic container and cut off its mouth to use for the vacuum chamber. After I failed in the first attempt, I found this would be the best way to make it. As you may realize, for the measurement, 
I actually did this step before I cut off the round hole on the wood piece in the previous footage. But for the ease of editing, I am showing it now. To seal the lid, I applied a thin layer of Vaseline paste on my plastic container's mouth, to make sure it won't stick to my silicone later. I used 100% silicone sealant to fill up the groove. And I am being very careful here, as I really hope this way will work out for me this time. After cleaning the leftover silicone, I then carefully and gently push the plastic mouth into the silicone groove. I don't push all the way. Just half of the way. To make sure there is enough silicone at the bottom of the groove. After just one hour, the silicone has been dried. I found this way is very effective. And here is the result. This is exactly what I want. I am very pleased with my second attempt. Now I can go ahead and use super glue to temporarily attach the container's mouth to the top part of the vacuum chamber. Don't worry. The epoxy resin will hold it permanently later. As any other vacuum chamber, here are some element parts you will need for your vacuum. We have two one quarter of an inch brass ball valves, one one quarter of an inch brass ball check valve, two one quarter of an inch brass female fitting, two air hose pipe fitting threaded connectors, one oil filled vacuum pressure gauge with one quarter of an inch mount, and pipe sealant tape. All purchase links are in the description, please check it out if you need it. On the side of the vacuum chamber, I just drill three holes and attach those pipes as you can see. One for the air in, one for the air out, and one for the light socket cable. Pretty straightforward. And of course, one hole on top of the vacuum chamber to insert the vacuum gauge. I use two component epoxy to seal it. Okay, now from the back of the vacuum chamber, I drilled a hole. This hole will then be connected to my second chamber through a vacuum tube later. And here is how I prepare the vacuum hose to connect two chambers. I use dust collection hose, which can be easily purchased online, together with one metal tube that usually comes with the vacuum hose. Here I am trying to bend one end of the metal tube. This will help me keep this tube attached to my main vacuum chamber body. I then attach the tube to my dust collection hose using electrical tape. After that, I use the heat shrink tubing to completely seal this connection. Perfect. The metal now is being glued to my vacuum chamber by using two components epoxy adhesive. On the other side, I use the hose clamp to tighten the tube down. Make sure that the metal tube is now completely fixed to my chamber. After all these steps, it is time for me to paint the entire chamber in black. I know. Black is an easy choice for me. As it can hide any imperfections of my chamber. I am now applying all sides of my vacuum chamber with epoxy resin. This may require a little bit of time. But I think it is worth doing in this case. For three reasons. Number one. My vacuum chamber is 100% be air sealed for sure. Secondly. It will definitely strengthen and protect my vacuum chamber in many ways. And thirdly, this will make cleaning so much easier in the future. As you can see here, I apply a thick layer of clear epoxy resin on the front face of my vacuum chamber. This is necessary, as it's going to handle quite a force when we do the vacuum. To hide all the imperfection marks between the clear resin and my wood border, I just throw some white stones in the resin. It looks alright. Not the best though. While waiting for the resin to be fully cured, Let's move on making our small heat resistance chamber for lost wax casting. As you see, I am using modeling foam board, super glue and clay to create a mold for our chamber. Oh, in case you wondering what is that stainless steel container. It is my chopstick container that I found in my kitchen. At this point, I haven't made my flasks yet. I plan to modify that chopstick container to be my flask. However, I actually decided to make my own proper flasks after making this chamber successfully. That mortar mixture that you see, contains 40% of fine sand, and 60% of fine refractory cement. After 24 hours, our chamber is now mostly dried. We can now take off all the foam boards and clay.
As you can see, the surface of the chamber is so smooth. It is because I strained the sand and the cement through a very fine strainer using my DIY vibrating tumbler. Please check out my video if you want to see how I made it though. Inside the chamber, I leave a small space on the metal tube. It is to put an air sealed cap on. As you see in the video, whenever we use the main vacuum chamber only, I will put this cap on. I just chose a bottle cap and filled it up with silicone. And of course, black it is. I just paint everything black with my high temperature spray paint. All right, before we connect the dust collection hose to our second chamber, one more thing we need to do. That is to make an inner skeleton for the hose. As the hose itself is too weak to handle the pressure when we vacuum. I use 16 gauge or 1.5 millimeter stainless steel wire and make a stainless steel coil out of it. After that, I put this coil inside our hose. I also made a cap out of the bottom of a soft drink can. Drilled some holes in it. Then I used two components epoxy adhesive to glue one end of the stainless steel coil to our main chamber. Like you see in the video. Oh wait, do you see anything in this video? I inserted the light bulb. And as you can see, I also drilled some holes on it. This is a LED light bulb, so there will be no problem when I do it. I just want to make sure that the light bulb won't be affected when we vacuum. To connect the vacuum hose to our second chamber, I do exactly the same as I did before. I use electrical tape and heat shrink sleeve to do it. But this time, I put the entire dust collection hose inside the heat shrink sleeve. The heat shrink sleeve is actually very strong and durable. This is a great way to protect our hose. Everything looks great. Now, I am making two gaskets in refractory mortar. This will help me when I use different size of the metal casting flasks. I use my flask when making these molds. Remember to leave some small spaces between the flasks and the gasket's mouth. You don't want it to be too tight. The one with bigger circle mouth. I actually glue it permanently into our chamber. Using high temperature RTV silicone which I also use to make my silicone gaskets. Since my biggest size flask fits this hole, I think there is no point to make it detachable. For smaller flask size, I will put my second gasket on top of this. For some reason, I decided to make a smaller round gasket instead of using the square one that I made before. But you know what? All you need is a proper metal washer that fits your small size flask. I bet I had too much time during that night. All right. Now we only have to add a switch for our light. Then connect its cable to the main cable of the vacuum pump. So it will slow get the power when we plug in our pump. Next, we connect the vacuum pump to the main vacuum chamber through a high performance vacuum tubing hose. And that's it. Our vacuum system is now completed. Let's test it out. What you see in the video is actually when I vacuum silicone to make my rubber sprue base for my flask. The result is just so satisfying. As you can see, there is not a single bubble air in my silicone. So smooth and shiny. Now, let's test out our casting vacuum chamber. The chamber itself is quite heavy. It is actually 7.5 kilograms or 16.5 pounds. As you see, I can easily lift it after 30 seconds of vacuuming. I call it a success. Don't you agree with me? That's it for today video. I really hope you like my video. And hope it can give you some good references if you are planning to do any similar project. Oh, one last thing I almost forget to mention. For the vacuum pump. The one with 7 CFM or 9 CFM is an ideal pump. See you in my next video.